I would like to open our second session uh, with lecture from um, held by Professor Vladimir Milovanovic, a modern engineering textbook typesetting using Sphinx documentation uh, generator. I would kindly ask all our presenters to be a bit shorter so that um, we didn't get much complaints about following our agenda. Professor Milovanovic, go ahead. Thank you. I thought we are going to have some short break in between these sessions, but I guess in the interest of time, we are going straight. It's hard to, to continue after such an, an inspiring talk, but uh, let's say uh, in the same direction, I'll talk about uh, modern book uh, typesetting, uh, especially engineering textbook typesetting using uh, already available open source software like uh, Sphinx uh, documentation generator. So uh, we are maybe not aware in our everyday lives how, how much the world has changed over the past few de decades. I mean, living in the uh, information age, uh, also called as new media age, uh, changed things dramatically. Uh, electronic gadgets like smartphones, portable uh, computers are, are omnipresent. And uh, the so-called uh, Generation Z, which is a term for, for social group that uh, uh, was born in between uh, mid-90s and, and uh, 2009, is uh, the first na digitally native uh, social group, which means that they grew up in the presence of internet and in the presence of uh, portable electronic devices. Uh, be aware of that, that all, almost all undergraduates in the world are now Generation Z. So they are uh, digitally native with, with, uh, with electronics. Uh, Generation Z is mostly taught by and, uh, and uh, trained and supervised. And mostly parents of Generation Z are from Generation X, uh, which needs to accommodate to, to this uh, digital, digitally native nature of, of, of the current undergraduates. One of the rare mediums that did not get obsolete over the, the course of these changes is the good old book, uh, although it got the pre prefix E, which is associated with electronic books, which can be uh, viewed on, on tablets or other portable, portable electronic devices. So both fiction and non-fiction books nowadays are mostly read uh, in at least in developed countries on ebook readers uh, like like uh, like this one. Okay, let's see uh, how engineering and scientific textbooks textbooks are different from the other ones. Well, not much. They, uh, in addition to, to to text, they contain equations, formulas, figures, diagrams, graphs, plots and uh, maybe some source code uh, snippets. Uh, they should be, in the, in, the, in the having in mind previous motivation, be available both on the web, like as a web page, and also on e-readers, uh, so that they can be digested by, by the Generation Z. And uh, for us, uh, nostalgic people, they should also be uh, physically available. Uh, so if possible, at least some degree of, of web-like interactivity should be brought into, into these uh, books. Uh, having all these uh, formats, for example, printed books are usually printed using PDF, from PDF, from port portable document format. Uh, on the other hand, internet pages are native in, in HTML and JavaScript, and uh, electrophoretic display readers uh, like like Amazon Kindle uh, usually uses EPUB, although Kindle doesn't use EPUB. It's, it, this is a free format and Kindle uses its proprietary format. So it would be good to, to have all these uh, formats available, but it's not trivial to reconcile them. And uh, the final uh, goal would be, even though most of the books are published by uh, a small number of very large book publishers, uh, thousands of, of, of uh, authors pub self-publish their own work. And it would be a goal also to promote author 
independence. Uh, and this is necessary to, to have a, a simple type setting. If it would be too complicated for an educated person to use it, no one would use it eventually. So what would be a strategy to create a modern uh, engineering textbook along these goals? Well, the strategy number one would be make a web book edition. So make a, a, a web page and try to convert it to PDF. Well, whoever tried to print the PDF page knows what's the result. And it's not that, that uh, attractive. Strategy number two would be take a PDF first, make a PDF first, and then try to convert it to HTML. Uh, well, amazingly enough, if you do it directly from PDF, this works even, even worse. Uh, if you take a step back, uh, I mean, uh, even converting PDF to EPUB doesn't, doesn't give a perfect result. Uh, and the strategy number three would be because PDF is not created directly, it is, it is created from some word processor. And if you take the original source from which PDF is created and then convert it to a web page, you get a better result. For example, if you take a uh, LaTeX and uh, as a starting point for conversion to HTML, you get a better result, but not without problems. For example, math uh, might disappear, et, et cetera. So it is not a good uh, thing to, to do a conversion from one format to, to another format. Uh, what would be the limitations or, or some constraints? The constraint would be, for, for at least for scientific and engineering textbook, uh, engineers like to write in, in LaTeX, and LaTeX should be a must. Uh, it is a de facto standard in today's scientific and engineering type setting. And uh, it's a precondition almost for all engineers that the PDF that they deliver is produced from, from a LaTeX source. Uh, if format conversions do not work well, let's try to generate all the formats, including La La LaTeX, from one single source. And try to borrow the ideas from a software world, from uh, agile software de development, and come to a winning strategy, which is to use uh, strings to rule all these formats. Well, if you are wondering what the lady in red is doing here, ask my search engine. That's the first uh, among images results that got, I got uh, when I typed light, LaTeX. Uh, next 10 pages look the same, but uh, the real one I was looking for was this uh, logo. OK, so what strings and how it works? Well, Sphinx is, 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 is a framework uh, that receives some restructured, restructured text input, uh, which is basically your content, and it gets some configuration, which is basically your style. Uh, it can get some uh, built-in or, or third-party extensions, and out of these, uh, it crunches it and produces HTML, uh, EPUB, and LaTeX source, which can be then further processed through some uh, tech engine like PDF tech or whatever to, to obtain uh, a PDF. Uh, Sphinx is not new. It's released in 2008 initially. Currently, it's at uh, version 4.2. 4 it is extensively used by Python. It is made uh, for Python documentation, but uh, it is adopted by many other uh, for projects uh, within Python, like Django, NumPy, CPy, and also outside the uh, Python community, uh, with not notable examples including uh, Linux kernel, Blender, which is an uh, uh, animation uh, program, and also uh, Read the Docs uh, platform, uh, uh, software, free software documentation hosting platform is, uh, is built uh, upon uh, Sphinx so that you can uh, automate your process of sharing uh, your documentation. Okay, let's see how the content is, is uh, input looks like into the Sphinx. The restructured text is nothing else uh, than a very lightweight markup, markup language, uh, very similar to a younger cousin Markdown. Uh, it, its philosophy is write everything in plain te text just as if you would write your uh, plain text email. So it's very easy to make some words 
bold by putting them in between double stars or italic by putting them in between single asterisks. You can put links uh, by uh, putting them in between uh, grave accents and the actual uh, URL in between angular uh, brackets. You could embed math directly using uh, LaTeX syntax uh, after the math directive or uh, put images just after the image directive, uh, local images or web images. And the output after the Sphinx processing would give you something like this. So you would have math, you would have bold italic uh, fonts, and you would have uh, images. Uh, itemized lists, uh, numbered lists, very similar. So you just write as if you would write in, your, in, in normally email, you put numbers uh, before or dashes for numbered lists, uh, asterisk sign, uh, and also some invitation for nested list. And on the right hand, you would see the, the product out of that. Uh, tables, draw tables as you would draw them in, in a plain text email. So use minuses, vertical bars, pluses, and equal signs to, to get an optional header rows and the, the output would be, would be uh, a table like this. A simplified table uh, eliminates the vertical bars, uh, so you can uh, have something like this. And uh, section headers, subsection headers are just underlined with an equal sign or a minus sign or some other sign to, to, to get uh, this. So nothing, nothing really fancy, but, but again, very simple to create. Uh, where Sphinx and restructured text really shine is the source code of any kind. After all, it is made for source code. Uh, so if you would have a block of a source code, uh, rows of source code on the left, uh, the output that Sphinx produces is shown on the right. So it does automatic uh, uh, syntax highlighting using uh, pigments. Uh, it uh, detects the keywords, detects the uh, comments and function names and uh, colors them appropriately. On the top of that, uh, you could write the output, for example, the factorial of four is 24. Then you can, uh, the, the, the Sphinx extracts the prompts, uh, it executes commands on the, on the right-hand side, uh, produces the output and compares to what you placed as the output here. So it, it, would, it would signal any mismatch and report an error. So in this way, you can be sure that all your code snippets are really correct. And if you are changing your version uh, and, something, and something messes up, it will signal you so that you, you can update it. So this is the product for LaTeX. If you, if you do uh, an output for HTML, you get something uh, similar to this one. In addition, you will have a prompt on the top right-hand side, where if you click, you would lose the, the prompt and you would lose the output. So it's very easy to, to copy this uh, code uh, and paste it into, into your interpreter, which is good for generation Z, which is impatient of retyping all the, all the things they find in the textbook or uh, removing these uh, dots. Uh, for the prompt. Well, uh, with appropriate Sphinx extensions, mostly third-party uh, extensions, uh, like the one from Runestone Academy, you can insert active code components. So the same code interpreted with this active code uh, directive would give you something like this on your web browser, where you could click Run and a built-in JavaScript full Python interpreter would be triggered and produce the result uh, here, which is 120. If you would click Code Lens, it would go to a Python tutor where you could go step by step uh, of each of these uh, recursive uh, calls and, and draw the, the environment diagram, uh, the, the frames, and essentially. Besides these, there exist uh, time assignments, multiple choice quizzes, parsing problems. You can embed videos 
uh, and many other components so that you can make your textbooks more interactive. Well, uh, Sphinx, in essence, is nothing else but a compiler or a converter, which gets some plain text as, as input and gives back some source, uh, either LaTeX or HTML or XML or EPUB for further post-processing. And it has a command line interface. All the information uh, used for building books can be tracked by a version con control system like Git, which is very convenient for uh, remote collaboration with remote repositories. And uh, if you have some Corrigenda or Errata on your book, you can easily distribute it. Uh, Swings relies on the appropriate uh, LaTeX processor in order to uh, produce PDF outputs. This means that software engineering techniques can fully be used to build your books from source. So no, no surprises here, of course, the Sphinx is in the first place a generator for software documentation. So what you can do is you can use Git, GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions, uh, and integrate full continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment system uh, for demonstration purposes uh, that is triggered on every commit uh, of your book and every pull request. Okay, so these practices are, are put into place uh, for the case of a modernized a Pythonic version of the classical MIT uh, book, which is called Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs, written by MIT professors Hal Abelson and Gerald Sass Sassman. Uh, it is by many considered to be one of the best and one of the most influential computer science books of, of all time. It teaches fundamental uh, programming concepts uh, and principles in, in the scheme programming la language, which is dialect of Lisp. And uh, as Professor Kapsch said, it is available freely on their website under Creative Commons uh, license. The idea was to take uh, this wizard book and uh, do a poetic code adoption from a scheme to Python and simultaneous poetic translation from, from uh, English to Serbia uh, to use Sphinx as a typesetting engine and publish this uh, book in all formats under the same license, of course. And well, what was envisioned is fulfilled. Uh, there's a book called Composing Computer Programs uh, which is uh, this one here. Uh, it's available in PDF, in HTML, and EPUB. Uh, it's complete source code, including a CI CD workflow uh, for all of these releases, is available on this uh, GitHub link. Uh, you can freely download the book, you can download the software uh, from which it is uh, generated. And uh, since it is a software project, you can clone it, you can fork it, you can modify it, you can send me your changes, you can play with it uh, as you wish. And uh, I don't know, probably the demonstration will not work. So just instead of a conclusion, I will give you a several uh, snapshots how this looks like. So you couldn't basically uh, distinguish it from, from from th th these here are, are from PDF, these, these four. Uh, these are uh, taken from the HTML version and these are photographed uh, on, a, on, a, on a Kindle. And uh, basically the, the, the PDF version cannot be distinguished from the one if it would be uh, made uh, clean slate uh, in LaTeX, the HTML version is, is, is good enough as if you would make the HTML first and I see this and, and, and the input source is, is really as plain text. So maybe this could be a viable, uh, a, a viable option for future uh, rapid development of textbooks. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Ja bih zamolila sve predavači i sesije. Ostalo nam je još nekih šest minuta do početka plenarnog predavanja um, da, da uključe svoje kamere. Um, imam prvo pitanje za predavača koji je prisutan na fakultetu. Uh, to je profesor Milovanović. 
Um, I think we can continue in English if you all agree. Uh, I have a question for Professor uh, Milovanovic. Um, how much is interactive textbook, and maybe some other um, uh, presenters might comment, uh, covered by uh, regulations at your university? So we all do have some kind of a regulations at our universities or faculties, and I'm very much wondering, uh, is it covered by regulations at your university? I think you're muted right now. Uh, I'm muted. Okay, now you now we can hear you. Okay, so uh, maybe it is covered by regulations, but I'm not aware of. So actually, I I honestly do not know. Uh, so what I know is that uh, uh, there are uh, textbooks available online, interactive textbooks available by Petya Foundation for uh, elementary schools and for high schools, and they are used. And they're also built uh, using Sphinx. And actually, I'm in touch with the uh, Petya Foundation so that uh, maybe we offer the book that uh, I presented here, so Composing Computer Programs, to, to also on Petya platform so it can be used by uh, uh, Petro students. Um, just a short question for Milovanovic. Uh, great talk. I'm interested uh, what you can comment on interactive notebooks, so Python notebooks for teaching. Thanks. Okay. Sorry for getting you back there. This is very good point, Bunny. Hi. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks are very good. Uh, they can be, uh, they're especially good in HTML, but uh, they cannot be viewed on uh, ebook readers that's one thing and uh, when printed in a print material they cannot compare to to what latex produce produce so simply book does not look i, I wanted book that that no one can say that it's not written in latex from from the first principles otherwise they are phenomenal and i think jupiter is a is a future and it's it's extremely good for for html books Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.